This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 4. Student outcomes for this lesson. Students understand the rules for adding rational numbers. Add rational numbers with the same sign by adding the absolute values and using the common sign. Add rational numbers with opposite signs by subtracting the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value and using the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. Students justify the rules using arrows and a number line or by using the integer game. They extend their findings to begin to include sums of rational numbers. Our essential question for efficiently adding integers and other rational numbers. What is the rule for adding integers with the same sign and what is the rule for adding integers with different signs? Example 1. Represent the sum of 3 plus 5 using arrows on the number line. How long is the arrow that represents 3? The absolute value of 3 is 3, so our arrow will be 3 units long. It will point to the right since the integer that we are using is a positive number. So we start at 0 and we go 3 units to the right, and that represents positive 3. The second add end, we are adding 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5 units, and so the arrow will be 5 units long. Since 5 is a positive number, the arrow will point to the right. So we continue with from 3, counting 5 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this represents a positive 5. The sum is where you end on the integer line. So the sum is 8. So we have 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. If you were, using, if you were to represent the sum using an arrow, what would the arrow be and what direction would it point? So when they're talking about a, using an arrow to represent the sum, the sum is 8. So the arrow that would represent that number would be 8 units long. So the sum would be 8 units and it would be to the right. 8 units to the right because it is a positive number. What is the relationship between the arrow representing the number on the number line and the absolute value of the number? The length of the arrow representing the sum is the absolute value of the sum. Do you think that adding two positive numbers will always give you a greater positive number, and why? Yes, the absolute values are positive, so you are moving farther from zero for each number, and the farther you are from zero to the right, the greater the number. Represent the sum negative 3 plus negative 5 using arrows that represent negative 3 and negative 5 on the number line. How long is the arrow that represents negative 3? The absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3, and so the arrow will be 3 units long and the direction it will point. Since the integer is negative, the arrow will point to the left. So we start at 0 and we go 3 units to the left and that represents the integer negative 3. How long is the arrow that represents negative 5? The absolute value of negative 5 is 5 and so the arrow will be 5 units long. The direction that it points. Since negative 5 is a negative number, it will point to the left. So we continue on from negative 3 and we count 5 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This represents negative 5. The sum is where you end up on your number line. And so the problem negative 3 plus negative 5, the sum is negative 8. If you were to represent the sum using an arrow. How long would the arrow be and in what direction would it point? So the sum would be, rec would be represented from 0 to negative 8 and so the arrow would be 8 units long and it would point to the left. It points to the left because the sum is negative. Do you think that adding two negative numbers will always give you a smaller negative number? 
So this is a little bit confusing because you're getting farther from zero and the absolute values themselves are getting larger such as 8, 9, 10 but the value is getting smaller. When you're moving in the negative direction as you move farther from zero the value gets smaller. So you move your second arrow and your value gets even smaller. So as you add two negative numbers together the you will always get a smaller negative number? The answer is yes. Since both numbers are negative, you move left twice, going farther from zero. When you move left of zero, the values of the integers get smaller. What do both examples have in common? The first problem that we did was 3 plus 5, and that answer was 8. And so we went to the right, and then we went to the right again and our sum is the combination of both of those arrows together. For the second problem we had a negative 3 plus a negative 5 and for this problem we went to the left and then we went to the left again and our answer had the cumulative arrows of negative 8. So the examples have in common that the length of the arrow representing the sum of the two numbers with the same sign is the same as the sum of the absolute value of the integers. So the rule for adding rational numbers with the same sign. And when we talk about the sign being the same, what we mean is that they are either both positive or both negative. And the rule, this is called same sign sum. You add the absolute values and use the common sign for the answer. So a positive plus a positive is a positive and a negative plus a negative is a negative and you add them together. For exercise 2, pause the video to complete part A and B of exercise 2. Then unpause the video to check your answers. In example 2, rules for adding opposite signs. Represent 5 plus negative 3 using arrows on the number line. How long is the arrow that represents 5? So we'll take a look at the absolute values. The absolute value of 5 is 5 and so the arrow will be 5 units long. The direction that it points. Since the integer is positive the arrow will point to the right. How long is the arrow that represents negative 3? The absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and so the arrow will be 3 units long. The direction that it points. Since this integer is negative, the direction of the arrow will be pointing to the left. Which arrow is longer? The arrow that is 5 units is longer. So let's go ahead and put those number lines, or put those arrows on the number line. So we start at 0 and we go positive 5 and then our next arrow represents the negative 3 and where you end up on the number line is your sum and so the sum is 2. What is the sum? 5 plus negative 3 equals 2. If you were to represent the sum using an arrow, how long would the arrow be and what direction would it point? So in this problem they're asking about the arrow uh, for the sum and the sum is a positive 2. So the arrow for the sum would go from 0 to 2. So it would be 2 units long and it would point to the right. Represent 4 plus negative 7 using arrows on the number line. So we'll start at 0. The 4 is positive so we're going to go to the right 4. That represents 4. Then we're going to add a negative 7. So we're going to count down 7 and that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that arrow represents negative 7. The sum is where you end up on the number line. And so the sum of 4 plus negative 7 is equal to negative 3. In the two examples above, what is the relationship between the length of the arrow representing the sum 
and the length of the arrows representing the two add-ins. So let's take a look at the arrow that represents the sum. And the arrow that represents the sum in this case is three units long and it's pointing to the left. So it's three units long and it's pointing to the left. And here the answer is positive two and the arrow that represents the sum is pointing in the positive direction and it is two. And it's asking what is the relationship between the length of the arrows for the sum and the length of the arrows representing the two add-ins. So here are your two add-ins and they're asking what is the relationship. The arrow for the sum is the same length as the difference of the absolute values of the integer. So the absolute values of the integers. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7. The absolute value of 4 is 4. And the difference between 7 and 4 is 3. And the arrow for the sum is the same length as the difference of the absolute values of the integers. So this is the difference of the absolute values of the integers. In other words, the length of the sum is the length of the overlapping section. And I guess I should say it's the non-overlapping section because the overlapping section would be right here. This overlaps and then this section right here is the non-overlapping section and that is the length of the sum. So let's change that to non-overlapping section. What is the relationship between the direction of the arrow representing the sum and the direction of arrows representing the two add-ends? And again, the two add-ends in this case are 4 and negative 7. And we want to know the relationship between the direction of the arrow representing the sum and the direction of the arrows representing the two add-ends. The direction of the arrow has the same direction as the arrow of the addend with the greater absolute value. So let's just take one more look at that, at that example. So we have two arrows. We have an arrow for a positive 4, and that's here. And we have an arrow for a negative 7, which is longer. And it says the direction of the arrow has the same direction as the arrow of the addend with the greater absolute value. So the negative 7 has the greater absolute value and it says the direction of that arrow has the same. So here the arrow of the sum has the same direction as the arrow of the larger absolute value. Write a rule that will give the length and direction of the arrow representing the sum of two values that have positive signs. The length of the arrow is the difference of the absolute values of both the p-value and q-value, or the two add-ins. The direction of the arrow of the sum is the same as the direction of the longer arrow. So the rule. This is called different sign difference. When you have one that is positive and one add-end that is negative, you subtract their absolute values. The answer gets the sign of the integer with a greater absolute value. Pause the video to complete exercise three and then unpause to check your answers. Circle the integer with the greater absolute value. Decide whether the sum will be positive or negative without actually calculating the sum. So let's take a minute to go through these. We've got our first pair. The integer with the absolute value is greater is a positive number, so the answer will be positive. In example two, Negative 9 is the greater absolute value, so the answer will be negative. Number 3, negative 6 has the greater absolute value, and it's a negative number, so it will have a negative answer. Negative 11 has the greater absolute value, so it will have a negative answer. Example 3, applying integer addition rules to rational numbers. So rational numbers also include fractions and decimals. The sum of 6 plus negative 2 and 1 fourth. The addition of rational numbers, which includes fractions and decimals, follows the same rules of addition for integers, which are positive and negative numbers, including 0. 
Find the absolute value of the numbers. The absolute value of 6 is 6. The absolute value of negative 2 and 1 fourth is equal to 2 and 1 fourth because it is 2 and 1 fourth steps away from 0. Then subtract the absolute values. So you start with the larger absolute value, which is 6, and you subtract the smaller, which is 2 and a fourth. In order to take away a mixed number, you will need to borrow from the 6. So you borrow one of those and rewrite it using the common denominator of 4. So 5 and 4 fourths is equivalent to 6. Now you can subtract the 2 and 1 fourth. So we have 4 fourths, take away 1 fourth is 3 fourths. And subtract your whole numbers, 5 minus 2 is 3. And then check to see your answer is positive or negative. Since the absolute value of the larger number, this is a positive 6, and so your answer will be a positive 6. The answer will take the sign of the number that has the greater absolute value, and so the answer is 3 and 3 fourths. And to double check that on a number line, from 0 you would go a positive 6, but then you would come back 2 and a fourth. And so your answer of 3 and 3 fourths would be in the positive area. Pause the video to complete all of exercise 4. Then unpause the video to check your answers. In this lesson, you have learned, add integers with the same sign by adding the absolute values and using the common sign. This is known as same sign sum. Steps to adding integers with opposite signs. Find their absolute values of the integers. Subtract the absolute values. The answer will take the sign of the integer that has the greater absolute value. To add rational numbers, follow the same rules to add integers. The steps for adding integers with opposite signs is called different sign difference. So you actually subtract those absolute values, even though it is an addition problem.